So what does the average day for a pen tester actually look like? I wanted to create my own a day in the life without all the fancy editing and really just, you know, an OBS kind of day in the life of what I do on the job every day, just to give you guys more perspective. I know a lot of people, especially that are new to this field, would like to know that going in. So getting straight into it, then the way that my day typically will start uh, as a pen tester is that, you know, you're going to still be using a, a window system typ uh, typically in a corporate environment, right? So that's something that might may or may not come as a surprise to you if you think that all hackers use is nothing but Linux all the time. You know, usually you're going to get a an Active Directory domain joined laptop, you know, that is, you know, is connected to the network. You're going to have an AD account and yeah, you're going to do your primary work on a Windows machine. Now, I have worked with people in the past that use Mac and stuff like that, but usually you're going to have a Windows uh, computer as your main system. And now I will say I do use Linux quite a bit on the job because we have virtual servers as well that I can connect to with Kali Linux on there, all the hacking tools that I need at my fingertips. Normally you can like SSH into there or maybe your company uses some kind of, you know, like VMware or something like that, like vCenter. And you can connect onto those VMs and just use them like uh, another virtual machine that you might be used to using. You know, for me personally, a lot of times I just go in on SSH access and do all the testing that I need to do in there. And so on the average day, it really depends on what I have going on in terms of my assessments. So the way it works in this field is you, you do assessments and an assessment can be a number of different things. It can be based around web app pen testing. It could be a web app pen testing assessment, right? It could be a network pen testing assessment or an API assessment. Uh, it could even be a red team engagement. You know, for me, it's any number of those things, which is really cool because that means I don't have to, I'm not siloed into doing the same thing every single day. There's a lot of opportunity to do different you know, variety of testing and learn different areas and even have your own focus areas where you are mostly putting your time, effort, and energy into, which is really cool as well. So if you're the type of person that likes to have that variety, that optionality, amazing field to be in. So that's what I find in my, in my current job, what I'm able to do. And typically these assessments will last for about a week or so, sometimes a little bit less. And that is between doing the actual testing itself as well as doing the reporting. So a very important part of this job is the reporting. And now it is a part that a lot of people dread, right? Because the fun part is the hacking, right? Now, if you compare this, I like to do the fitness analogies uh, on this channel. And so I would compare the pen testing to like lifting weights in the gym. Like that's the fun part um, for people that are into fitness. You know, maybe you're not into fitness and you hate lifting, but typically that's considered the fun part and the boring part, but that is absolutely core is like your nutrition, right? That's basically like the reporting part. Like a lot of people hate to do it. They hate the, uh, to have to go ahead, you know, type up all the stuff and do screenshots and all that. But that is the product that you produce as a pen tester, right? If you're a programmer, <clears throat> the product that you produce is the code that you that you write, you know? That's the tangible product. Now, for us as pen testers, our product is producing a really good report. So this is something that is very important. And especially if, uh, you know, I've been in job interviews where they've asked me without going, without, you know, doxing internal details of companies that I work for before they've asked me, you know, basically, can you tell me about something really interesting you found on a report or can you create, even create a sample report that you can show me? Cause they want to see your, your, uh, ability to write a report as part of the interviewing process uh, for a lot of the jobs that I've applied to. I've noticed that. Um, and along those lines, if you want to, if you really want to ace these job interviews and want to get some more information on what are the top 10 questions that I've seen be asked time and time again on these interviews, the ones you really need to know, check out the description below. Absolutely for free. I have a nice PDF guide where I go over all of those 
in detail show you the like how I would answer those questions and give you additional resources that you can check out as well to really solidify your understanding of these important questions that you're going to get um, most of the time in these job interviews. But yeah, there's definitely that five day window going back to going back to it. There's that five day to seven day window, you know, usually this is a question that I've gotten from, from a lot of beginners to this. You know, when I say like you have a week, a lot of people are like, Oh, do I have to work on the weekends? No, you don't have to work on the weekends is typically what I've seen for pen testing is you have those typical nine to five hours. That's what I have. Like the, the standard Monday through Friday, nine to five. So when I say a week, I mean a week worth of business days. So five business days typically is what you have. Now your mileage may vary depending on the company you work for. Maybe they have like three day assessments or 10 day assessments or whatever. Right. But usually it's about a week, about one work week that you have. And during that time period, you are trying to find as many vulnerabilities as you can if you're doing a one of the pen testing assessments, right? If you're doing red teaming, it's a little bit different. Um, we can talk about that here in a second a little bit. But yeah, typically during this window, I'm trying to find as many vulnerabilities as I can. And they give me a scope, what's called a scope. So during, you know, at the start of the assessment, they'll say, hey, these are the assets we want you to test. Like maybe they give me some URLs or some IP addresses of servers and they say, we want you to test this, but the scope is limited to just testing this. We don't, we don't want to test anything outside of that. And so then you know like what the scope is. A lot of times you might have to reach out to the requester if they don't if they didn't provide you with access to the application, you need to get have them set you up with credentials that you can use to authenticate and actually have access to the functionality so that you can test it, right? So there are a lot of little administrative things that you might have to do that I don't have to do as much because we have dedicated people on my team that handle most of that for us. So I'm fortunate enough where I get to spend the majority of the bulk of my time on the actual fun pen testing part of the job. And even the reporting, a lot of that's been automated, but I have worked jobs before where it wasn't as established and I had to do a lot of this administrative work manually on my own and report writing manually on my own. So your mileage may vary there. Now, personally, yeah, I, I am able to spend most of the time on the pen testing, but some of the things you might need to do is reach out to get those credentials. Um, you might need to get more information about the application that can assist you in your testing. So you might have to reach out and find out like, okay, what is this functionality for? Maybe there's like some kind of file upload that is expecting, say like some XML data. You might want to ask um, for a valid XML file that it's expecting first and then try to mo uh, modify that. See if you could get some XML external entities injection going on with it or something like that. Uh, but those are the types of administrative things you might need to do. And then, of course, the reporting process is a lot of administrative work, typically, because you, depending on how your company does it, you might need to use, like, Microsoft Word and manually input all the findings. And when you're writing these reports, you want to keep in mind that there's multiple audiences that you're writing for. So one is the technical developer people, right? So you could be technical um and you want to provide them a lot of technical details so that they can fix the issues. But you also need to communicate towards the non-technical like um, executives and stuff like that so they can understand at a high level what the issue is, what the impact is, and all that so they can understand the business risk. As well, you want to make the reproduction steps very detailed so that if there's someone else on your team that has to follow up and verify if they fixed it or not, they can easily follow back the steps that you listed to reproduce try and reproduce the vulnerability. So those are all very important things to keep in mind while you're doing this. But as like a general cadence, normally I'm working on like multiple assessments at a time. And so I'm doing like four days of the week, uh, at least three to four days out of the week is spent entirely doing pen testing. And then it would have like one, maybe at worst case, two days a week doing the reporting. So that's kind of what the, the cadence looks like. It's kind of constantly shifting back and forth between that, depending on how far along I am on my active assessments. Now, if I speak a bit to red teaming here, that's a different uh, goal, right? What we're, we're not trying to find as many vulnerabilities as possible in that case. What we're trying to do is 
typically, you know, they'll all have different goals based on what threat actor we're trying to emulate. Basically, we're emulating a real world attacking group, a real world hacking group, if you will. And depending on what the business wants us to emulate, we will emulate a different APT, Advanced Persistent Threat Actor. So usually we do some research on that threat actor, see like what are the tools they use? What do they typically target in the company? And we'll pick one that makes sense for the actual business that we are running this engagement on. And we will try and basically emulate that. And, and a lot of it is pivoting around the network. We're not testing the technology. We're testing how good are the defenses? How good is the blue team, right? How quickly can they detect us? Can we fly under the radar? And how much damage can we do to this organization essentially uh, without being spotted? So a lot of it involves stealth and things like that. Now, typically the scope for a red team engagement is massive. <laughs> like you pretty much almost have, like you have very few limitations as far as what you can do and what you can test. And of course you don't want to disrupt the business or anything like that. But typically you're in scope for doing, uh, fishing attacks, right. And, uh, maybe some spear fishing, maybe some USB drops. If you're talking about on premise now, I I'm completely remote, so I don't do any of that anymore. I have back in the day, but nowadays what I, what I am mostly doing is, um, basically the remote version of that. So there's assume breach scenarios as well, where you have, you assume that a breach already occurred. So they'll give you credentials and then you emulate, like they want to test to see if, you know, if, and when we actually get hacked, how prepared are we to respond to it and how quickly, quickly and efficiently can we lock down and minimize the damage done? So that is what like an assume breach scenario is. So typically we do a lot of that. Now also typically for a red team engagement, the timeline is a lot longer. It's going to be a lot longer than five days. It really depends on, you know, what the engagement is, but yeah, usually you're looking at several weeks for that, uh, where you can actually test that as well. And, you know, I have done some, what's called purple teaming before where you're basically working in tandem with the blue team you being the red teamer, right? That's where it gets the name purple, right? Red, red and blue combined together to make purple, right? Kind of, kind of lame, but yeah, that, <laughs> that is, uh, that's why it's called purple teaming. And basically, usually what you're doing in these scenarios is they're testing something really specific. The goal is to strengthen the blue team. Uh, they're trying to detect a certain, a certain um, technique. Basically, you perform that hacking technique, and they try to see if they can catch that like either in the logs or some kind of automation and you just keep in constant contact with them. And you're like, Hey, I ran the attack. Did you detect this? Yes or no. And then you'd kind of help them, uh, better prepare themselves. Like in the event that this attack really occurred, could they detect it? How quickly, how efficiently all that. And the goal is to strengthen the defense, strengthen the blue team. So those are the things I would do on the day to day. I think that about covers it. So hopefully that was of help to you guys. And if you want to go into some more content, I have that on the screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.